this. I haven't looked at this catalogue in a while. There's me again. There you are. You haven't changed a bit. <laughs> I've still got the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> So this is a piece of paper that has been dug out of the archive and it says the exhibition outline. Anish Kapoor's plans for the Hayward Gallery exhibition, the first major showing of his sculpture in a British public gallery, are extraordinarily ambitious and take close account of the gallery's distinctive architecture and internal spaces. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most remarkable things is, is actually that it happened at all because mm -hmm. the Hayward was quite sort of reluctant in those days to give over the entirety of its spaces to a living artist in that way. Correct, correct. And I think this complicated negotiation for a relatively young artist, mm. you know, um, um, to, to, to take on the whole space, you know, upstairs and downstairs, yeah. um, uh, from my perspective, difficult thing to do too. You were quite prominent among the critics of the space. Oh, was and I? Yet, uh, and was yet, I? Oh, I didn't know that. And yet, in doing this exhibition, See, you, you kind of proved uh, for me, the, the potential oh, really? of, the, of the space. Yeah. I don't recall being critical of it. What I do know is that there was a lot of, let's say, superfluous architecture oh. in the Hayward, as if to hide what the building really is. Mm -hmm. So one decision we made, you and I made, really early on, was clear the building. I have some things okay. which might aid this conversation. Yeah. Um, we have floor plans. A floor plan. Yeah. You thought of this as five mm. separate spaces, did mm -hmm. you? Um, each, each with its own character. Yeah. When I read this thing, yeah. entering the first gallery, the initial impression is one of emptiness. I mean, and that was a really important thing, you know, to think of the architecture as a real thing, substance, place in itself, and to use it as a, 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 a replica self. As a body, do you mean as, as a, a body? body yeah. As a body, yeah. There was here a stainless steel iris. void iris set into the wall, which was a space full of mirror. Mm -hmm. And then here, uh, a work called uh, My Body, Your Body, going into the space. And then we made this decision to make a hole in the floor, sucking into the ground. I think it was called suck. I mean, this was a big deal. It was a big deal. Because it, it was deal. a big deal to put it in the ground, to drill a hole, to... We've been given a, a structural engineering uh, oh, <laughs> note <laughs> on the... So the structure of the Hayward Gallery is made of in situ reinforced concrete. Mm. Mm. A lot of reinforced concrete. Bless you guys. Bless you, Susan, for letting it happen. I've always felt that the great difficulty with the Hayward to this day is that there's one kind of forum down below and you can hold it together because there are three very different spaces that require you to move yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but to carry the energy upstairs, really difficult because it's as if you almost want to start a new story, another show. So that's the strategy here mm -hmm. to make sure that you kind of had three quarters of downstairs, go upstairs and then come down again. Leave that to last. You know, I have a weird thing, which is that I don't fully remember what's in this room. Uh, we had what, what has sometimes been called the, the, the kidney there, which... It, was it? Yes, was it was yeah, right was... here. Can, may I ask, yeah. uh, are there pictures of the show? Mm. And... Yeah. Ah, good. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Go on. Yeah. Good. Okay. There you are. Oh, yeah. That's your saying in this gallery. Uh, uh, and yes. here was here. These were the works that were downstairs, the way I remember it. There, there is a shot are, of the whole there, room. Are there shots there, of the whole room? There is. That a, would a, be so helpful. I actually recall. That's, that's the one that's I mean. Easier. Yeah. Yeah, that's easier. There good. we go. So that shows you a second yeah. of the spaces that you would Correct. have encountered. Correct. Um, do you remember your thinking in here? I feel there was an overall to this show, which was what I've subsequently called the non-object. So between the void object, dark pigment, works that recede beyond the space and then works like uh, yellow or even um, white dark or whatever it's called all of which are this sort of ethereal object somewhere between object and painting mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. between um, skin and the physical those were the two themes downstairs but then upstairs there was a room of the white dark objects there they are. How do you describe that object? That is, that's when I'm pregnant, which is a white 
bump on a white wall. When you view it from the front, it's sort of fuzzy and disappears. And then, of course, it's very physical and very present, um, viewed from the side. All these works were playing with that idea of, of the status of the object, let's say. And then in the side gallery, dragon. These are blocks of stone, Chinese river stone, so, you know, contorted and eroded, like beasts, dragons, and just this little coating of blue dematerialized them. Some of which was quite fugitive. Flint. I remember some, yes. the wife of some senior diplomat, I won't say from which country, got some on her very, very oh, expensive good. coat, and, it, and oh, we, got a, we got a cleaner's bill. <laughs> good. Don't touch the art. That's what it means. We're coming on to the last gallery. Yes, so as you went down and yes, came this, curving wall this again. way, yeah. this way, yeah. into this gallery, which had this one object in it. It had two very singular objects. No. Ghost. It was just one. Ghost. Was ghost there as well? Which I remember. Oh, of course, the stone. The ghost was there. The oh, stone was there. Was it there? Where's the image of ghost? Oh, dear. You're right. This is ghost. Yeah. It's a block of stone carved, the interior of which is carved out and polished. I, I wrote, let me read this. Ghost is a five-ton block of rough quarried limestone into which a deep hollow is carved with an aperture almost large enough to enter. As you are drawn towards the opening, the polished, almost liquid interior surfaces of the stone release a shifting, intangible, yet strangely corporeal form which wraps itself around your reflection. A twisting column of light, a fleeting appearance of the spirit within matter, both there and not there. Mm -hmm. So you came then to this space here, where there yes. was this, this big hat form hovering probably about two and, two and a quarter meters, so just above immediate touch. Dark, ominous, uh, whatever form you can see and can't see. Um, but what was lovely was in, I forget, we should have it. Do you have it? So now we look at this shortish piece from Time Out, Lonely Hut. It says, once seen. Hayward, Kapoor, mid-afternoon, 28th of May. You, F in black, green, brunettish. Me, male, in blue, beige, white, fairish. We spoke in red space. Loved your smile. Can we find another place to meet less dizzily? Oh, isn't that <laughs> just the best? That is great. That says it all. That's all you <laughs> there need. There we go. Critics. That's all we need. Who needs anything else? <laughs> what else do we have here? <laughs> These works made your viewers behave in a particular way in space. People almost lined up to look at them without being told. Do I mean, it's something I've always been very, very concerned with. This, this idea that uh, sculpture, the object, is highly manipulative, that what it does is align the body. That ordering of the body and therefore the space is crucial to what the objects are trying to deal with. As a believer in exhibitions, I'd love to think that exhibitions change the way artists Definitely. work and, move, oh and make you move on. I think one of the things I felt at the time was that um, um, I could have confidence in the objects themselves, that I didn't need a hundred things in the room. That, you know, that's quite two, brave, I and mean, that's quite a two, brave thing. This room yeah. had three yeah. things yeah. in it, and it's a big room. And to be able to just do that and feel that actually the objects could hold mm. that space. Mm. You know, one doesn't know about things. And in the studio, they have one kind of life. Mm. You don't really know about them until they're in the world. Um, 66,000 yeah. people saw this show. Is that right? Which was quite remarkable at that time for a contemporary show. Good. Yeah. I'm looking for a bad review here. I can't oh, find I'm one. There's got to be one. Valdemar, go on. Optical effects may be fun. Yeah. But exactly. there's more substance in Monohar Tunes. Well, there more you go. Substance. There you go. Richard Dormant. This is Richard Dormant in yeah. the Daily Telegraph. Watch how people behave in front of these sculptures. They attempt to stand still as though in front of a painting, but find they can't. They're always trying to find the right position from which to view each work and always failing. Though this art is often described as contemplative, in fact, it can be curiously unsettling, as though the condition of irresolution and dissatisfaction is precisely what the sculptor aimed to achieve. Mm -hmm. Well put, Richard. <laughs> well put, Richard. And I loved working on it with you, Martin. Thank well, you. Well, it was good Truly. fun. It was good fun. Truly. Yeah, it was good fun. Good it wasn't times. the easiest thing in the world. It was bloody difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. It's all there. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Good. Nice. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you all. Yeah. Fun.